Okay, uh, good evening. Welcome to uh, Seamanship 315-8 Ship Handling. So our topic for tonight, it's all about the beaching. So the learning objective is these students will describe or enumerate the necessary procedures and precautions when beaching, taking into account the place, speed of the ships, effect of the wind, taking soundings, and assess the damage done to the ship. So first, let's describe the circumstances in which a vessel may be beached. So first, what is beaching? Beaching is a process wherein during an emergency situation, a ship is intentionally taken towards shallow waters or at the beach itself or grounded. The word beaching is used for such process because the type of emergency grounding is done only in those areas where the ground is of soft mud or sand as in a beach or in order to avoid the damage to ship's hull propeller, and then the rudder. Meaning to say, uh, cadets, these are not done when you are in the rocks or in a, a corals, okay? Uh, because those, uh, uh, those natural resources might damage the hull itself. Beaching will occur when the ship is deliberately butt onto the land, such as when being scrapped, okay? For example, if it is... Uh, uh, for scrap, not for dry dock, but for scrap. When there's a big problem on the board that would cause the ship to sink, and this can only be stopped by beaching the vessel. For example, your hull is uh, hold, okay, or damaged, and the, the buoyancy and the stability of the vessel is also uh, destroyed, or it, it, the writing arm, okay, it cannot write anymore meaning it is already in the angle of the lull. So the reason why the master or the company itself have decided is to beach the vessel. So some ships are specifically designed to be beached, such as military landing ships. So that, will, that is quite different. Uh, there are ships well, which are like uh, amphibia, amphibious vessels. Okay? Those amphibious vessels are like they can... They can operate in on top, on top of the water. They can operate in the land, and they can operate under the sea. So there are military vessels like that, and they don't they do not include. They are not included with what we are talking about right now. So why beaching a ship should be at slow speed? Okay, sandbars encountered on the run to the beach should be hit by slowing down your craft. In many cases, the boat's momentum and the following weight will be sufficient enough to carry the craft over the obstruction. However, in the forward motion of the craft is stopped, the engine should be slowed immediately to idling speed. Uh, meaning to say, when you are beaching, you should be at slow speed. Okay, Or if the current or the wind is favorable, which is enough okay, to bring your vessel beached on the shores, then that is good enough. No, you shouldn't go full or not full. Of course, that is so typical or common. And this is an example of the vessel Moniosco. Okay, they have a beach, their vessel. Uh, kasi yung hal na yan, gentlemen and ladies, it is flat. No, this is almost flat on this on this keel. Okay, this is where if you go dry dock, they they put some uh, cemented pavements beneath it, no, for for the vessel to go under uh, going dry dock. So it is also almost the same except that walang ganon, no. 
uh, walang walang dock na pupuntahan yung vessel but it is to save the vessel. That's why you are beaching. So why beaching is done? The three main reasons for beaching are the following. To prevent loss of ship due to flooding when there is major damage below the waterline of the ship. So I've already told you about this. If the hull is uh, has a progressive flooding already. To refloat the ship when satisfactory repair has been done. Okay, And watertight integrity is restored. And lastly, in order to hand it over to the scrapyard. So if it's scrapyard, they're going to remove everything, to probably sell it, and then renew. Procedure to perform beaching of the ship is ballast the ship to its maximum capacity. Okay, Check where the damage is more bow side or stern side. So you have to check where is the damage and head with the damage side for beaching with 90 degrees to the tides. So there should be a 90 degree angle to the tides. So your, your, damage, uh, your damage side will be on the uh, will be on the beaching side. Take all measures to avoid ship going parallel to the beach. So you shouldn't go parallel. Baka mamaya, yeah, you, are, you, you feel like a backing and feeling. So do not do backing and feeling. Just go straight. 90 degrees. Parallel or angle to the shorelines. So if approaching from a stern due to stern damage, Drop both the anchor at good distance so that they can assist the vessel in heaving when going back to the water. So you can go astern and then you can drop anchor that is estimated. So one shackle or one cable is equals to 27.54 meters. So if, if so you should mind your shackles. If your shackles is has a length of uh, probably 13 or 14 shackles for each anchor, then you multiply that to 27.5 because one, shock, one shackle is 27.5 meters. And with that, you have to uh, correlate your, your astern speed that you are intending to beach the ship going astern. And then sounding of all tanks must be done before and after beaching. Why are you going to sound? Meaning sounding is you are going to measure. You are going to measure the inage. When you say sounding, it is the inage and not the alage. So if it's balas, we're talking just about the inage. Now, what is the difference between grounding and beaching? Some of those terms are pretty straightforward, but what is the difference? A grounding is when a ship strikes the seabed, while a stranding is when the ship then remains there for some length of Time. Okay, so grounding, uh, uh, he or uh, sorry, she, she stri uh, strikes the seabed and then stranding for because of uh, because of the duration that you are grounded, then you are stranded. Otherwise, if you will try your best or if you will push forward to be afar from that grounding area, then uh, you will have more damage, you will suffer more damage. So another reason for beaching is to prevent imminent, imminent collision, to prevent loss of vessel when severely damaged and in danger of sinking, the intention to repair damage and refloat at later time. Now, the emergency procedures for stranding or grounding can refer for a number of reasons, bad navigation, faulty navigational equipments, bad weather, Engine breakdown, or you are NUC, and then or steering breakdown also. In case of stranding, take at least the following actions: stop the engines immediately. Okay, and nobody in the bridge or in the engine room has felt it. Sound general alarm, seven short blasts followed by one prolonged. Water tight doors to be closed. VHF channel sixteen and broadcast. Okay, so broadcast, VHF broadcast to other vessels. And also sound the appropriate signals, the lights, the shapes, as per part C of the call regs, 
uh, to be exhibited, especially important in case of fog. Deck lighting is also, if necessary, check. Always check the position on the chart. Take note of any valuable information, the time, course, steer, the speed, the lug, eventual maneuvers, and also not just the ballast tanks, but also the bilges, okay? Bilge tanks also, you should sound those. Immediately take overboard soundings around vessel to check on one type, what type of sand bank the ship is lying. Meaning, take overboard soundings around vessel on what type of sand bank is the ship is lying. Meaning to say, when you go aground or stranded, you will have also have to take the uh, soundings around the vessel, not on the ballast tanks, ladies and gentlemen, but around the vessel. Why? So that you will determine how much depth there is and what is the uh, seabed. Okay, what is the seabed? Kung ito ba ay mud? Is it sand? Is it corals? Is it coral sands? Is it rocks? Okay, so you will have to determine. If the ship is on top of a flat sandbank, the danger of breaking into is minimal. If the ship lies on a mountainous sandbank, the risk of breaking is real and the stress on the ship is enormous. In that case, urgent action must be taken. Okay, if it's mountainous, naturally. Okay, uh, if there's a submarine mountain there, naturally there's a tendency that the your ship may be divided into two. So try to free the ship by giving full astern or full ahead with successively the rudder to hard starboard and hard port. Depends on the type of the size of the ship. Call the assistance of tugboats or the sabotaging or yes, sabotaging. And consider jettison of cargo to throw cargo overboard. Meaning, you want to alight. You wanted your vessel's weight to be a, a more lighter. That is That term is jettisoning. Then be careful of the risk of pollution. Uh, your bunker fuel tanks, okay, lube oil tanks, uh, heavy fuel oil tanks, low sulfur tanks, okay, sewage tanks. Uh, be careful, no? Uh, it is uh, uh, it is uh, much uh, it is more possible uh, if the vessel is grounded or stranded. So with that, pollution can occur. Then evaluate the risk of pollution. Inform company, the third parties, the relevant protection and indemnity club. PNI means protection and indemnity club. Hull underwriters, then the port authorities. Update necessary vessel's position in radio room, satellite terminal, and the automatic distress transmitter or the GMDSS if you are in distress. So with the grounding, not yet. You are not yet in distress. Consider danger of the situation and if possible, take pictures. Okay. Consider further actions with consideration for salvage. So that's what I told you earlier, salvaging. Salvaging meaning someone will have to save you. That is salvaging. And they get the money for, uh, with that. And of course, risk of sinking. Okay, emergency message. So that is the time you can send distress if the vessel is already sinking. Secure position, change of tide, weather streams, or the tidal streams, the stress risk. So when we talk about the stress risk, we're talking about the shear force and then the bending moment as what you have learned in your second year. Stability and trim. Okay. And then the assistance, the port of refuge. Also, if there's any oil spills, so you're going to need all the third parties involved. And with each company, there's a procedure with this no uh, emergency uh, no, notification okay? or emergency call whenever there's an emergency. Keep the company always informed and all actions to be written in the deck logbook. So that is all, gentlemen, for our subject matter about beaching, about grounding, and about stranding. I'm going to stop sharing right now and take your attendance.